Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Hobby Musician. You're joining us today for another episode in our little mini-series where we're doing some repair work and some restoration work for a vintage Hondo 2 Professional Series bass. In fact, it's this bass. Now, if you want to get caught up on any of the episodes we've done already, uh, you can tell that some components are missing, there's no strings on this bass, click the link at the top and that'll take you to a playlist where you can see everything that we've already done to this instrument. Today's episode is going to be a little different than some of the other ones we've done because you'll notice we're not at the workbench and other than just showing you that instrument, I don't have anything else with me because today we're going to talk about one of the key steps in the restoration and repair of this instrument, but it's something that takes a long time to do and it just makes for a boring episode. We're going to talk about rust removal. On our very first installment of this mini-series, we talked about the various things. There were some repairs, some broken components that we needed to fix. There was also just rust. All of the tuning pegs were kind of rusted over. The screws that held on the tuning pegs, the screws that held on the uh, electronic you know, cavity covers, as well as the bridge itself, was just all rusted. And in order to kind of get this back up to playing specs, we wanted to deal with that. We said in that episode that rust, unlike scratches or dings in the body, Rust is actually a degrading process. Rust changes the actual chemical composition of the material. It breaks it down. So we wanted to address that. Now, as a very quick overview of what rust is or what happens with the rusting process, well, the fancy term here is this is an oxidation process. And if you talk to a chemist, they're going to tell you that this process is something that Lots and lots of materials can undergo iron, steel, aluminum, chrome, all these materials at the chemical atomic level can undergo this process of oxidation. Now, to make a long story short, what happens is in this process, these materials will lose or give away some of their electrons at the atom level. Now, the good news for us is that the process of oxidation does, in the chemical world, have an opposite. And that's called the process of reduction. Now, in reduction, you literally do the opposite thing. You have materials that gain or receive electrons from something else. So for us in this project, what we wanted to do is we wanted to take those components that had experienced oxidation and we wanted to expose them to a, a process of reduction to try to reverse, or at the very least, clean up some of that oxidized rust that we saw. It's only gonna take a few minutes of searching on Google and you'll find that there are tons and tons of home remedies when it comes to removing rust. And I would just say this, be cautious with what you dive into because sometimes your method of what components you use does depend on the actual thing that you're trying. For example, one of the ways that we can achieve some of this reduction is we can use some mild acids. Now don't get, don't get um, worried because a mild acid is something like vinegar. I mean, vinegar that we have in a kitchen or you can go to a grocery store and pick up, vinegar is just acetic acid. Well, if you don't have vinegar, you could get some lemons or some oranges or they have the citric acid in there. Even some remedies you'll find talk about using colas like uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, those kind of things because inside those kind of beverages you'll find phosphoric acid. So there's lots of different ways you can get some of these household easy to come by acids but the whole point of this is you basically have to apply those acids for a period of time to the surface or to the component that you want to reduce or you want to start the process of reduction. You're going to see here um, what I did for these components. The major things that I wanted to do on this base is that with the screws that hold everything in as well as these tuning pegs needed some attention. So what you're going to see right now, the screws, the, the actual tiny screws that hold on the plates, the covers for the back side of this base, 
were just kind of completely rusted over at the top. So what I did was I went and got my, um, just a glass, a short glass from the kitchen, and I took some distilled white vinegar, the same stuff I got at the grocery store. You can see here, I just dumped all the screws into that glass. Now, I left them in that glass overnight. So we're talking, I came back to them about the same time the next day. So it's about a 24-hour soak. Well, what that kind of allows me to do is I can fully submerge these screws because I'm not worried about um, any kind of intricate components getting messed up. It's just a really simple piece. It's a chunk of metal in the shape of a screw. I can dunk that in there. With a little bit of steel wool and some elbow grease, I went screw by screw and I was able the next day soaking in that acid allowed some of that oxidative damage to be reduced or at least um, softened so I could actually clean off. Then I rinsed all of those screws and let them dry completely so that I don't run the risk of having some future rusting or oxidation. The harder part was what to do with these tuning pegs. You can see here, these tuning pegs really did need some work. There was rust everywhere. And you can see all of this kind of rust in their full shameful glory right here in this picture. But unlike the screws, I did not want to just dunk these tuning pegs in their own glasses of vinegar. That's going to start to seep into the gears and the inner workings of, of these mechanisms. And I didn't want to run the risk of ruining that. So you can see here what I did, um, I knew that the flat kind of the head part on those tuning pegs was just a solid chunk of metal. So you can see in a glass, I actually wedged and propped up the mechanism part over the level of the vinegar so that that head, that flat head was able to soak overnight while keeping the mechanism above the level. After an overnight soak, once again, I was able to come back with a little pad of steel wool and start to work, and it did wonders. It, that um, rusty, you know, copperish, brownish material was softened up, and just without too much effort, I was able to really rub that off. Now, for the covers, I did take and I soaked some of that steel wool in um, the vinegar, and I, and I went pass after pass, and without soaking overnight, I was still able to grind off and work off that surface layer of rust so that when you look at these pictures, you can see here midway through the process, when I just you know had the first one kind of done, um, I was able to see that this made a huge difference. And then after everything was done, here is the set of tuning pegs now in their full um, restored glory. So as I said at the top, I know this may not be the most exciting episode, but I do recognize that if you're out there, if you come across a vintage instrument, or if you have an instrument that maybe just is starting to show signs of rust or wear and tear, this could be absolutely something anybody can do with materials that you can find around the house to help restore and hopefully stop any further degradation or damage to the components on your instrument. Well, I hope you got something out of that. And if this is your kind of thing, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell or check us out on any of our social media accounts. All those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching. And as always, until next time, play on, my friends. Play on.